For a few seconds, this place was Armageddon. Today, joining us for the Shining Wizards podcast is none other than Strangler, Nick, Maddox. Oh, relax. Yeah. Who, right. who are you selling it to? <laughs> right. at, at least two viewers. At least two. To, to, to the sheeple out there. All right. Yeah, I think we're, we're, we're ready, ready to rock and roll. Okay. Ready to rock and roll. All right. Is that how we're going to be getting started? Yes, today? that's yeah. how we're starting today. I like it. Yeah. yeah. For that. All right. Thank you for joining us today on the uh, third. It's our third. Third. Three's a charm. Call me really. We should know. We're doing it. We're good to know. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, welcome to our podcast. We're the Fallen Angels. Um, Which number is this? This is three. number three. This is number three. three. Yeah. I wasn't paying attention a moment ago. It's okay. Oh, uh, we have actually two special guests with us today. Two. We have, uh, one special one. Dave Levy. Who has gone by many, many different wrestling names, which we'll get into in a little while. All right, we'll get an 18 driver's license. And our return, <laughs> and true. the return of our special friend and brother, mentor, Nick. Mentor, mentor, teacher. Well, you said mentor. I'm like, no, <laughs> wrong gimmick. <laughs> now you always had your hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're going to start off a little bit on a somber note. Um, we lost a good friend a week ago today. Gene Pettit, also known as Hillbilly Cousin Luke, and uh, I wanted to bring him up because I know that uh, Strangler, you you worked quite a bit with Cuz. We yep. touched on that a little bit on the last podcast yep. you were on. Yep. And uh, like it is weird, right? We talked about him one one minute, and I just got done talking about how I missed him, and we I were just seen talking him. about that night before he passed away. I, the last time I saw we, we last time we saw him was uh, the Men in Arena. Really. Remember that when he he was there? Gene, with, yeah. Uh, he was he was sick then. He could tell he was. He got like, sick around. He was in the wheel, just sitting in the was, wheelchair. He was already yeah. in the wheelchair. Yeah. He was like two, was He was just over two hundred pounds probably at that point. So he was sick. But yeah, we talked for a while, and Gene's the one who actually gave me the turtle moniker. Yeah, he's <laughs> the one who gave you that name. Who's the original turtle? Greg the Hammer, apparently, from what I'm told. Uh, it's something you, you're not told. You. Sitting on on, on, the, on the couch at a, one of the many hotels, and I'm here, and Jimmy's there, and Gene's over here, and doing our typical circle thing. And he's like, "Jimmy, I got it." He's like, "What's that, bra?" I figured out what the kid works like. He works like he's he's our new turtle. I don't know what the hell he was talking about. <laughs> well, who's the original turtle? Is it Greg the Hammer Valentine? You work just like Valentine. And you know, I I, I watch Valentine matches. I never study Valentine. <laughs> You getting it now? Yeah. And then I finally went back and watched Valentine. I'm like, holy Christ, I work like Valentine. But, you know, I was never into his style. I always thought he worked methodically and slow. Like, you know what? I work methodically, methodically and, and slow. slow. But also you were talking in the last time when you were on about having to switch it up sometimes. When you're working yeah. the old guys, sure. they want to work slow. Yep. You know, and yeah. then you They're work the newer style. kids and it's all spot, 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 spot. <laughs> I kind of would catch him one or sooner or later. Yeah, I mean... But, you know, that's that's part of it, so... Well, you're working with Gene. You're working with a guy who was 400 pounds when I worked him. We got to the point, you know, we worked at probably 20, two dozen matches. Mm -hmm. Last couple matches we worked. And what do you want to do? Same old, same old. Same old, same old. See you when we get out there. All right. That's it. Never talked it over. Nope, nothing. Nothing. You never needed to. <laughs> that's why. 
Go out there and work. You do old school because yeah. you're doing old performance. You're not hey, really... we, we're, we've been working one guy, you know, Frankie Flo a lot, and it's, you know, pretty soon it's, it's all just going to be... That's what the problem is with okay. indies now. Because we used to see guys work programs, even the, in territories. They're working four or five nights a week. The territories, they're working the same guy over and over. By the time when they were doing uh, the 17-day routines, you got to the pay-per-view, those guys were crisp because they've been working each other for three months. Now you're lucky if you work the same guy once every three months. I did this one match with Manny Fernandez. Man. Hey, you got some Manny Fernandez uh, stories. No, 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 but, but it was interesting because the one match I had with him, it was we didn't have to say much. All we knew is two spots, middle of the match, the finish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everything else, because of the way, obviously, with his mindset, my old school mindset, it just worked. And it just fell together, and afterwards it was like, good match, good match, that's it, done. That's your Cousin Luke story? Huh? <laughs> that's your Cousin Luke story. Well, that is the same thing with Cousin Luke. All you gotta do is take, you know, like a roll of doom from him, and that's it. I spent a lot of, yeah, I spent a lot, a lot of, I learned a lot from Gene, just not even so much being in the road, uh, 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 rest, wrestling with him in the ring, but just the road stories. But you learn about the communities that these guys used to live in, the Mid-South and the Mid-Southern territories. They all live together in these little things, and they all travel together. Well, it's kind of like the like Piper they, and all them who all lived in Jersey. Yeah, they all yeah. live in that little center of Woodbridge, right across from the Woodbridge Mall. Really? Even in um, Parsippany there, they would come through there. There was a sandwich shop, Don's Sandwich Shop, and they actually had pictures of some of the old guys from the, um, from the 70s and early 80s autographed to them in there, because above... Savoldi had actually owned the apartments, <laughs> and they would actually stay up there at certain times when they needed a place to stay. That makes sense, too. When I lived in uh, Rawway, New Jersey for a while, there's a place called the Rawway Inn, and a lot of the boys were hanging there. The old infamous story of Hacksaw and Shiki, that's where they were leaving on their way up to uh, MSG that day when they got snagged. They were going to Asbury. Or the Asbury. Well, Asbury. they were coming from that, that pub. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Clink, clink. <laughs> 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 Car rides with Shiki. Oh. <laughs> Always fun. Always fun. Uh, car, rides. <laughs> car rides in general, I'm sure. Gene's you know, G G probably one of the last staples of guys who are from that territory region, who went from town to town, did what he was paid to do. He worked so many different gimmicks from the Gene Lewis, you know, the Lewis, uh, the tag team. We got the uh, other guy down in Florida, bad name. But the brothers. But then he was Malachi and Karma with Sullivan, and he had a lot of gimmicks. He worked, and he, he worked, and he worked class. everybody. He yeah. had some world class Mongols. Bit, yeah, yeah. Mongols with uh, yeah. Skander Akbar. But everybody sees him as just cousin Luke, and because he's always worn a mask, nobody looks at him like a thirty-year vet who's worked all the big names. Well, so you got to remember, a lot of us grew up and you know watching this stuff in the '80s. We, did, we eventually moved into the older stuff once we learned about it, but I know, was fortunate enough cousin to Luke was hillbilly cousin Luke to us because he was out there. I had a know. great cable system growing up. <laughs> uh, I, I did. I got every. Well, you know, in Ireland, we, we only were given so much. I had wrestling <laughs> every night of the week from a different territory in the country. Yep. Yep. Even before U sixty eight um, switched over to music uh, when you were a music video station before they went uh, home shopping network U sixty eight. Mm -hmm. with with one of those. They used to show music, old music videos and wrestling from all over the country every night at 7 o'clock. Remember e ESPN in the beginning there? Financial News Network. That's oh why I get God. to watch Polynesian, Polynesian Championship Wrestling. Wow. I missed that stuff. We gotta, that's another thing we're going to have to start looking for. That other stuff? No, but Ricky Johnson and every show is Ricky Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, the one thing is, uh, Sorry. I've I've never heard anybody say anything negative about uh, Cousin Luke. He, he must have, I've never met the man personally, but I've heard it. That's just a guy. I mean, it, it, because even as a promoter, what a great promoter to work for. He took really great good care of the boys. He paid every, oh. all the boys, and his shows were always full. Yep. I think the smallest Cousin Luke show I ever worked with was six, seven hundred. He knew how, not just how to sell a show to the individuals that, were, that wanted to put on the show, but he was able to sell the show to sponsors yeah. in a way where each match was sponsored by a different company or a different business. That's how good Cuz was as a promoter, he was a promoter not, and a booker. Not, not a fantasy booker. Was like, no. oh, let me make this great show. People will come because they'll see the poster. Right. It doesn't work that way. you got to go out and promote and tell the people about it. 
Nobody else had a promote. Yeah. The technical difficulties. We'll, we'll get back to that. She did a ninja. Yes, she did. She did Sorry play. about that. I stepped out of the frame for a second. So, uh... Yeah, okay, Faye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's it's, it's never going to change. It's always going to be Captain Kfay. Captain Kfay. Was it Cram? Cram. <laughs> Are you talking about the Cram story? No. No, no we don't want to talk about Cram? Okay. No. Okay. okay. <laughs> that person does not exist anymore. That's okay. Why. That's okay. They really happen. Hey, we, we've all had our dark past there, brother. It's all good. <sighs> I mean, you know, there, there, there was a time where I was on the dark side. You know, I, I, I did, I did. I was a son of light, didn't you, sister? I did. Okay. I did. You know, I, I was angry, mm. and, and I, I fell into the dark side, and I was, you know, Countess I, Noir there for yeah. a little while. Oh, yeah. and, you know. and this one, I, you know, we yeah. found in Chicago, and he's a, you know, a bit of a drunkard. So they, they, well, so we put him off the bottom. Well, I was the one drinking now. Uh, you know what? Don't be judging. Yeah. We don't judge in this circle. He's only good coffee. Yeah, yeah good coffee. That's it. Irish coffee. Yeah. Good Irish coffee. So you got any, any uh, uh, cuz, I just, I, cuz, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm sorry I haven't seen him in years, I, I'm, he's one I'm, I really miss. He, I was one of the people I could say in the business never screwed me over. No, he was, he was never. Good, uh, I mean, when we used to live in Clifton and he would come and visit us. Oh yeah, cuz had good times at the yep. house. So he asked me like what would go on, I said we would just basically hang out, watch TV, we didn't even really right. talk wrestling that it much. It was, was community, just... it was old school brother. Right. Like I said, he was in a part of the business and through the 70s and 80s. They all lived around each other. Hello, uh, we're back after a short little, uh, uh, what do you call Oopsie. it? Oopsie! We had a little technical difficulties. As you can see, yes. we played musical freaking chairs. But we're all back now. We're on a slightly different angle, but it'll be okay. Am I not in the picture? Okay. Now right. I'm here. Now I'm in the in oh. Stand up straight so the bitches can hear you, you bastard. Rise above cancer. Hey, rise. Rise above. As oh. you land on my toe, thank you. He starts you. it all. One man wave. Yeah, so show everybody how poor you are of your holy socks. You know what? Hey! They're we're true workers here. Book us, I need socks. Book us, we need socks and I'm just going to sit here. Boots. Yeah, don't. We, yeah, we just... All right. All right. So before we had a little technical difficulty, we were talking about, you know, how guys were originally introduced into the business and how you work territory, territory, We were doing Cousin Luke. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we were talking about, you know, the 70s and 80s, you know, it was a time when your trainer who was teaching you the ropes, kind of introduced you around, took you around from show to show. That was kind of like the intro into the business, days before social media and having to get yourself out there. But there's something about having to wrestle in front of a promoter, in front of somebody, to see what you can do, rather than having to watch a videotape. And I think that puts training into a better perspective, specifically between the time when we came into the business and today. Because, like, Mike Sharp would bring you into the shows with him, correct? He, even when Iron Mike had his school, there were still very limited schools in the area. But even the schools that were open, there was reputable guys training people. Everybody had a name. They had done television. There wasn't Jabroni number 1 training at the local high school gym, whatever it is. But right. guys had tickets under their belt. They sold, they sold tickets. They wrestled mainstream. They wrestled all over the world. Now you got some jackass who watches a couple of videotapes and does backyard wrestling. They open up a school and have the balls to charge 25 bucks to some other asshole because they don't know any better right. and take their money. It's exactly. Like they're being trained by a backyarder. Well, you know, we, we've, we've been away from the business. We were gone collectively about 12 years. And we had a pretty good resume behind us before we left. But when we came back, we knew we had to start from scratch. And part of the problem we've been finding with trying to find bookings is we either have guys saying, you know, we'd like to put you on the show, but we need you to come up to our school. But, but we, we're very loyal to ECPW. That's our home, always has been. Yeah. And I feel like a little bit betrayal if I were to go work out at somebody else's school just to get on their show. I don't think it's, I don't think I need to do that. And also the other ones that tell us we need to come down for tryouts. I'm like, the doesn't our work stand for itself? We've had almost 20 matches in one year. You, you took a decade away from the business and all these people telling you to do that haven't even been in the business a decade, so they don't know your reputation because 10 years ago, 15 years ago, but independent wrestling had compiled. no television in this area, so if you didn't go to indie shows, nobody knows who the hell you are. Oh, we've, we've done the circuit. I mean, we, we when we first started coming in, we were going to other people's shows and stuff. Well, it's how the business has changed. An independent show, there is no such thing as promoter that runs weekly shows anymore. There's no such thing. There's so many guys out there with so much talent who don't work because there's just nowhere to go. There's no television in this area for independent workers. They're lucky if they work three times a month. 
you know, a good way to describe independent wrestling, o a little old school terminology is like a piece of carbon paper that keeps trying to be reused and reused and reused. After a while, it keeps losing a little something of its originality that you need to fully look at the product to completely get an understanding of what it is in front of you. And if it's not being done correctly, if it's not being handed down correctly, that's why you have these issues with certain promoters. That's why you have issues with certain wrestlers. Because that chain or that lineage of actual training from individuals who have that reputation under their belt from doing TV in the old school territories kind of loses its luster after a while when it's just sad to see that these that people are not picking up. I mean, Jerry Lynn, I knew, would train guys. You know, there were some guys out there that you can look at Lance, um, Lance Storm. Mm -hmm. You know, you have some of these guys who, the, uh, the Dudley boys, who understand what it means to try to pass down a lineage. And, but it's unfortunate, well, not as many are doing know, it as they Dudley should. Dudley boys are trained old school, though, dude. Uh, that's my point. Yeah, that's Johnny Rods. You know, a part yeah. of, a, I think, a big issue of, with that what happened was that I noticed, and it was basically a lot of us, we all left at the same time. There was this mass exodus of the of all of us old schoolers right around the early 2000s because we had just had enough of the backstabbing and the ball, blackballing, and it was just getting too clickish, and it was just out of control. Well, some of us got blackballed too and kicked out for another reason, oh, yeah. another completely we're, 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 reason. What, what are we referring to? No, I'm talking, black hole from. Well, no, I'm saying, it, well, what happened to us? Different stories, but yeah. But it, mean, it was just, everything was just too gossipy, too drama, too, and we all went away at the same time. To, to and that's where, that's where <coughs> these kids that came in after us have lost, because like I problem, said, a whole, and look how many of us are all coming back at the same this time. This is the problem too. with the indie business and what is, goes back then. This is why the Brotherhood is dead. There's nowhere for anybody to go anymore. So now when guys linger around and linger around, they start getting jealous. And why are these kids getting my spot? That should be my spot. Now there's they guys linger around. So on. Now they can't go to Florida. They can't go to Tennessee. They can't go to Pacific Northwest. They can't go to Texas. All those areas are gone. There was a time you could make a living doing that. Now you can't because those promotions aren't running four or five times. No. Nope. You're lucky if you get a weekend spot. So now you got guys lingering in these areas. They're not getting any exposure. They're not getting any matches, and they're getting jealous. And there's no brotherhood because everybody's jealous of everybody because they all want their. Do you payday. think it's a territorial thing too? The jealousy, the attitude, the ego. Well, it's all ego because everybody thinks they can do Always. it better than everybody else. But the problem is they don't want to work together because it's my, my take's bigger than yours. I, ha I do have to say, since we've come back, we we've run into some of that, but most of it, it's really not that bad. Anymore. I think. We, I, I think, also think we came in at a good time for indies. I, I mean, mean indies. what what business does a kid who never leaves his house have running a wrestling business? What uh, what purpose does a guy who, who's, who's like never taken a bump in the ring, but yet he's telling everybody that he knows the business better than anybody I'll call else? Call Sabia. Yeah. I'm not talking names. You want to talk names? Yeah. Come on. Yeah, he's, talk like he's getting bookings. Come on. <laughs> whatever. It's there's guys out there who don't have not paid their dues to belong in the business, and they don't since they're not a brother. They don't care about screwing the boys over. You know, there are some people out there now, and I don't, probably don't have to name names, but this person will keep on trying, keep on trying, keep taking other people's money, keep screwing boys, keep using the same people over and over again. Why? Just so we can have a place to, you know, say, I'm still in wrestling. I'm still in wrestling. Well, guess what? Nobody gives a shit about you, so get the fuck out. That sounds like that other group you were working for, that CWF, where the bookers put the belts on them. You know those marks? CWF? C what was that group you worked for, the mass kids who put the belts on their, on their own waist and you couldn't oh, fucking take the a bump? Oh, the WBO. Well, we don't know. We didn't work, though. I didn't say you did, but yeah. you were on the show. We were on the show. We were style and finesse, which that was a really good match, and we're coming back after you, brothers. We we are. But that's that. There you go. It's a perfect. It's a backyard fed who are try, who are trying to get money from other guys who could talk, try to work finagle the boys who are starving for money, for, starving for a booking. It's probably why they have Knight and Vito there. Like, dude, where's our bookings? Because nobody else. Yeah, well, where's our know, bookings? As usual, a lot of stuff was said and promised, and sometimes but that's things the problem fall with the through. Sometimes things fall through. In trying to make the business, Vince killed the business when he took out all the territories. Mm -hmm. 
And since there's nobody with any lineage, like we were talking about, well, who knows the business, well, Savoldi, yeah, but Savoldi doesn't have to run a regular program. He does, he does now. Actually, he, actually, he, he, he has. You know, Caruso have actually become partners and they're running. And what has together. he done? Before, what, and well, how long? But this has only been about the last two months. Savoldi so was, really in sure. the past several years, too, was also working with... Um, down in Puerto Rico, yeah, uh, doing some there, stuff down there. We're seen everywhere right now. You know, he's, got he's everywhere. you know, he's always Maine right. in the New England right. area. It's still, you know, and it's finally like maybe I, I don't know, done these other places, and I need to come back home and start ruining everybody's life here. I don't know. <laughs> no, actually, it would be good because I worked for Savaldi when he was doing the tapings up in Catskills and everything. Yeah, yeah. Cutchers, good, good guy to work for. Yeah. He is and I'm old glad school he's professional. Just, like I said, he's he's been working with Gino. I, I, the last I don't know months. what he has working for him. I've heard don't like some of the things I've seen working for him. I can, no, I'm not going to get into it, but, uh, he hey, you know, people, he just but it's another things. example of how how silver tongues work their way into the business when they know nothing about the business. Flash uh, a little money around. Oh, we can talk about the cyberspace okay, thing and, and, talk, and talk about all the money marks that, that work their way in and, and kill the, the great what independent group. Let's talk about what started off as. Which, which, which talk, well, have you, you know, okay. Here, Dave. Wait, 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 here we go. Let's start, let's start with the, what the dream was supposed okay. to be when Billy started it. Billy oh, Firehawk, originally, rest in peace, <laughs> really Firehawk. That's hardly ordered who Billy Firehawk was. The origination of the I then the Sultan. Cyberspace Wrestling Federation, I wasn't even involved at that point. You know, I was just another, you know, wrestler, you know that was going to perform, you know, he wanted me to do this whole, you know, this whole southern gentleman type of gimmick, went into the city to do pictures, didn't have to pay, you know, he's taking care of everything. But originally, it was supposed to be broadcast on the internet, he had a couple of uh, people who were supposed to broadcast it. And this was going back before even people started doing the iPay-per-views, the internet pay-per-views. It's 2002? Exactly. I mean, and I'll get into that in a second, too, so it's yeah. good that you bring up 2002. And so apparently around when 9-11 happened, um, some of the people who were supposed to help him out, apparently there were issues and had passed away, like somebody was involved with 9-11 there. Mm -hmm. And plus their home was in Battery Park, not too far from there. That's, that's where your uncle lives down yeah, there, right? Uh, right off division, uh, yeah, right up the Yeah, and they had a place out in Las Vegas, and they said, you know, instead of coming back to New York, we're just going to stay out in Las Vegas. So he had no other connection out here, and when I told him I was going to be out there on my honeymoon, he's like, well, let's get together, Let, let's go over a couple of things here. So on my honeymoon, yeah, exactly. <laughs> this. Sure the the like cyberspace that, that everybody first associated with started. And he brings up his list. This was the best, I mean, for me, this was kind of like, okay, here's my match. What bridge am I going to burn down by doing this right now? Mm -hmm. That is my inkling because he's putting me in the position of asking me who to use and who not to use. And let me add to that. I was at the, about the same time. I had about a two-hour phone call with Billy Firehawk one night, talking about it because he was talking about who he wants to put together for booking guys. Who we wants to bring in? And we were bouncing ideas off. And he was bouncing names off of me of who I would use and who I wouldn't use. And that was the last time I talked to him about it. And next thing you know, I didn't hear from him for another five, six months. So, without naming names, I said no to this per. I was telling him. I mean, yeah. and, f and familiar people that I had worked with. You know, for so long, nice to my face, knife in my back, you know, that kind of oh, thing. Oh, the Tennessee handshake show. Yeah. Oh, big time, yes. Uh, I said, no, because we don't want that drama. You know, there's no drama that needs to be done here. See, I was glad that Bill put me in that position. Because there are individuals who came in, wrestler, you know, you get to know everybody, who salivate at the opportunity that one of their own is becoming a booker. Oh, I'm going to get bookings, I'm going to get... Bullshit. For me, it was about business. Mm -hmm. And business and personal are two separate things. And some people cannot understand that. I'm like, look, I'm going to put people on the show who I feel deserve it, talent-wise, who I know can be out there. I want a product out there that, if it is in front of a camera, it looks professional. 
don't tell me that you've only been working a year and a half, a couple of indies, maybe one, you know, once a month for somebody, and you haven't developed. No. Let me see something first. I've been in the business five years. Doesn't you know? It doesn't mean shit anymore. That means you maybe have twelve matches. Exactly. <laughs> so when we we slimmed it down and we were toning up the run. Okay, see, Mike. Right, oh, right. But Bill did not complete. But Bill did not completely years. understand me. And it took after a couple of shows for him to give me, you know, actually control the book to completely rework the talent, completely rework how the writing was done before people actually took notice of anything. Dude, you guys have some really good names yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. on there towards the... Uh, Early names. You know, yeah. that became before names. the trouble started. See, that is, that's why he could thank me. Because I, I, I have that eye for talent. I was using Antonio Thomas because I liked the way he looked when I saw him on tape. I like, here's a kid who's got potential. And what happens not too while long later? He gets signed by Vince. Same thing happened. Um, we were using James. Striker. We were using Mickey James. Hell, CM Ron Punk. Killings got to see him. See, I mean, oh, I, TNA got a lot. Did. Well, besides, TNA be, yeah, TNA picked up guys from us because Jeff Jarrett you know, was on the shows yeah. too. I have well, that was, that was, uh, because my my amateur background and the way I look at wrestling. You know, I look at it kind of like a craft. I can pick it apart. I can look at it. I can break it down into the sport and analyze it. And when you're a wrestler put into a booking position and you look at things a little differently and you know how to view talent. I look for storytellers. Exactly. You're looking for somebody who's not just not getting in there just to get their own spots off. Just not to get their own moves off. Just to get their own move set. You know, it's a, it's a give and take relationship here. You know, it takes both people to make each other look good. Yeah. Yep. It takes only both as good as people. Your Sometimes opponent. it takes three people. You gotta have a good referee. That's true. Right. That's or, true. Or, or, that's a, 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 a really good analysis. And that's, and that's, that's, a, that's a whole other show a, a really about referees. Good analysis you can put and that's the other thing too. I wanted good referees. That's why I hired um, Jim Keen, Mullineau and, and Keener. And uh, yeah, Keener. Michael, Mike Keener, because they were ECW referees. Yep. They had pay-per-view experience. You know, this is what you want to put you into a pay product. a little extra for talent. Before, well, that's the other thing. Nobody wants to pay. Anything. I know we'll get into this in a little bit, but before a certain mark came in and took you, over you, a book. You jumped about seven years. Oh, I know. <laughs> but I'm, I'm saying before, but I'm saying before, I know, I'm saying before that. Good you know, we, um, on one of the shows, we had um, Al Snow. And out watching from upstairs, he's watching, he's looking through, and he, he, the words out of his mouth, I will never forget, he's like, wow, this runs, runs. Mm -hmm. He's like, wow, this place runs like a mini Raw. And I took that as a hell of a compliment. That is a good compliment. I mean, because it runs. He's not saying, you know, the product, obviously, what we put out there, yeah, it kind of resembled a little bit. But when he's saying runs, because we always had somebody upstairs, not just downstairs, but in a good gorilla position. Plus, I'm running my ass off out there, you know, making sure everything looks good. And it's good to get a compliment like that, because how many promoters today, how many people running today can actually get a compliment like that? Right. Mm. Uh, not many. Mm -hmm. I need a oh. drink after all that. My God. Yeah. I was about to say, we don't have to say anything. By the way, we're the Fallen Angels of our podcast. Let him go. Again, people, David Levy. David Levy. Uh, I'm here for bookings. Man of a thousand names. Man of a thousand names. <laughs> yeah, I was going to introduce him as uh, Jackie Black or Jackie Dreamer. Or, uh, Electric Eric. something? Electric Air Archer. Rebel Eric Archer. Yeah, one of the others, you know. Uh, what else did you have? Flag the Casino Ryan? Kid. Casino Kid. Casino Kid. The first, the first name I used because when I was training down at Sharps, <laughs> I was going back and forth with uh, Mike because I didn't have to pay him to train because I was refereeing his shows on the weekend. Right. So I would, I would drive down from William Patterson University, you know, to to train down there on Monday nights, um, sometimes thir you know Wednesday nights, and then we had the Saturday, and you can get in there and do some free flow workout. If you're lucky, and if people are actually sober enough, <laughs> I know, but no, it's just it's before you know after the show we would just have some fun. That's all. That's all. It was just a good time down there. And my first name I ever used was called the Decimator. <laughs> the Decimator. The that Decimator. Was your next name, your that was my first name because under a hood, and I was so nervous, and I, I you know, I, I'm just going out there just to. Be an enhancement talent. Why don't you just call yourself Steve Awesome Wiser? Well, no, I, the reason why I call myself Lord. the Decimator because in in high school I wrote for the Underground Paper, and that was my nickname. It was probably like late '93, dude. It was '93. Yeah. Wow. It was '93, yeah, '93, '94. Some of our listeners might so have that was my born. first name, the Decimator. So then, so then we went into uh, Casino Jackie Black. Uh, then there's the nickname Jackie Dreamer. 
Oh you yeah. Because I had the pompadour hair. Yeah. And goatee. And, we had, and then we had the Mr. Body Suit with electric Eric Archer. The Flash. The tomato. The, the tomato. The tomato. The tomato. Suit. The tomato suit. And then, uh, then we had the uh, Southern Discomfort. Uh, Southern Glory. And, and then Southern. which? Well, Southern Discomfort was you and uh, Tony Myers, our good friend Tony Myers. I spent one week in Alabama, and I come back and hick. Look at that. All right. And then, uh, and then this this young man came out of nowhere. I know, chair face that I was. Yep, 19. Uh, svelte. Oh, yeah, I svelte. Yeah. Svelte's I miss that body, let me tell you. And, uh, Six pack, now I got a mug. So got a cake. Were, uh, well, no, mug. As, Beer uh, ball. Uh, halfway uh, between. It's fermenting. Yeah, yeah, it's working there. And you were known as who? I was known as uh, Southern Storm Chad Stevens. Southern Storm Chad Stevens. I'm sorry, I can't, over, I can't hear you over the left, right, left, right of the Grandmaster B. There you go, left, right, left, right. <laughs> Oh, it's more action than he's ever so, done as Grandmaster. Do you have any? Ah, do you yeah. have, do you have oh. any stories about when you were uh, working with their? Uh, uh, you know, I, I don't mean to, to rib on your eyesight, but you know, everybody does. It's okay. Yeah, he can't see for he can't see his hand in front of his face, and uh, for the longest time, I was told that uh, that he couldn't see, and I didn't believe it. I thought everybody was driven me, and it wasn't until uh, one of the one uh, t uh, one TV taping uh, where we're supposed to be going up against. Uh, Hot and sexy, or red hot rush, most sexy. And I'm watching him reading the, uh, the, 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 the match list, and he's like this. And he's reading it like this, and I'm like, I'm, I'm like what are you doing? Further, a little further, just a little just further. Just a little further out, little but further almost nose like touching that. the wall. I'm like, what are you doing? He says, I'm reading the match list. And I'm like, holy Christ, he can't see! He's going to protect me out there! Because you were greeny green. Oh, he's green. Yeah. Oh, so green, I was pissing grass. Oh, that was wrong. I can't feel anything down there anyway, so that's yeah, that means two things. <laughs> I, I feel so, bad for Gina. <laughs> so, uh, I, I don't know if you guys know, but um, after uh, quite a long time, um, some something happened about 2008 where uh, Gino couldn't run shows out of the school anymore, out of the arena, because um, Mark had to go to a newspaper and, I mean... I got to see a really cool shoot video the other day that uh, our friend Tim Plasma did about Isn't this right, person. Isn't that right, Tim? Correct. 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 <laughs> <laughs> immature and like two years in the business. I was. But you know, he, it was well deserved. Brother. You might not be able to see him, but I'm pretty sure you can hear. Him. Yeah. <laughs> you could just scoot in a little. Just, there you go. Uh, hey, and hey, Danny, hey, it's hey, Tim Plasma, Plasma, everyone. It looks like I was lost in the picture. Oh. Yes, I, I know. It, it's oh. very strange that you know a vampire be hanging cool. with some fallen angels, but. Uh, oh. Um, but yeah, what, was, right, what, was the, what was the guy's name? Uh, Paul. Harvey. I don't know, see, yeah, uh, Dave, he was a ring announcer for us, Dave Cunningham. Okay. Uh, uh, why Gino put him in charge of the um, showcase, which was like the, uh, for new guys, they had like the Adrenaline, which is like the main roster, the showcase, yeah. which is, guys were just coming up. I started in 2006, I had my first match. Mm -hmm. 2007, working at showcases and things like that. That was we didn't really get much experience. I got like thrown in like eight man gauntlet matches and guys who are like his friends. Right. Got put in like 60 minute Iron Man matches. So I got like very little like rank time. But he tried so I like to how you put that. His friends. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I don't know. We're just playing around. Hey. But, so he, he apparently what, what? Went to the newspaper or something? He was trying to promote a show. He's, trying, he's like a kind of, Seemed like kind of a mark for Vince. He tried to do like the uh, ladder match, mm -hmm. um, and sort of like Money in the Bank, right? Like, um, with a contract, and the winner can uh, gets the showcase title. And he, we, the thing with the school, we got to keep it like low key. You can't, right, right, yeah. you can't really advertise. Right, right, put right. up posters as much right. as like sure. other shows. Right. Um, well, that was something that was known for years back when even I was there. Yeah. You know, that problem with the town because of parking. <laughs> so, um, oh yeah. So he he wanted to do like a press conference, and Gino told him not to do a press conference, keep it low key. Mm -hmm. So he and did a cheap it, yeah. press conference, at, like cheeseburger in paradise or something, and it actually was like the front page of like the Daily Record. Oh my! Must have been yeah. a really still lose day, and it was like. Uh, uh, Dave, um, Logan. Logan, all right, yeah. Dave Logan. Mm -hmm. um, I know Dave Logan. He does, like, 
cosplay costumes now. Yeah, yeah, yeah he does. He actually does. He actually I, does I, I grew, I grew up with Dave Logan. Does the Wolverine fellow. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Wolverine. Wolverine guy. And I grew up with him. It's like him versus Mo Sexton, and he said, like, front page of the Daily Record the next day, I'm going to rip out your ACL and wear it around my neck. Wow. So, so sadly, so, uh, oh, that's, some, that's, that'd be, that'd be hold on one second, we've got another guest coming in here. Oh, there be more guests? There's more people coming, There's more yeah. people coming. Put them on the floor. I mean, sorry about that. Um, so, yeah, what happened was this, this jackass um, basically ended an era of TV tapings at the school. Um, hold on one second, we've got a... We got friends coming in right now, joining us for the podcast. You want to get the, the other thing set up there? I think they'd be going around the other side just to watch. I think it's okay. Uh, do you want to set up the other thing? Uh, uh, all right. Well, we'll take a two second. We're gonna take a two second break. All right. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. I think. <laughs> in this in this part, we'll advertise one of our shows. How about that? Hey, we're, we're back. back again after a third little flip there. All right, so as you were saying, we were talking about this jabroni that ruined things for Gino in the, the yeah. ECW arena there back ECW. in 2008. ECW arena? ECPW. Okay, okay. ECPW. Thank you. Lake Hiawatha. Uh, okay. All right. So he did the, uh, yes. he did the news conference right, right over the paper. People in town complained, got to sh shut down. Um, he kind of apologized to Gino. So he thought he he didn't really apologize. He acted like he like did us a favor, as like promoting and you know, promoted perfect. too well. Gosh, perfect he, example of not being in control of your own. So um, he he just disappeared, started doing his own thing. Um, I was maybe like one year, two years in the business. I was. Pretty upset. Pretty, green. Mm -hmm. pretty upset about it. Um, yeah, sure. Instead of having a nice, convenient place to do shows, we're, right. we're now doing Ring Crew in Binghamton, New York. Yeah. <laughs> it's like three hours away. Yep. And I, I gave her a link to a video um, that I shot on like my cell phone camera. It was, right and, and the creeper just giggled through the whole thing. It was absolutely. The hysterical. guy who did it, he's like really tall and. That's right here. So I we stopped at a McDonald's and I'm interviewing a McDonald's <laughs> statue. Well, <laughs> McDonald's. Well, we'll, we'll clip it in there. Like <laughs> and he's gonna start his he was gonna start his own like thing just called like showcase wrestling. And um, that that didn't work out or something. That's a oh, fire gee, story. No way. Really? really? <laughs> oh, who who had a touch? So oh. I was so I was just interviewing the McDonald's statue like, hey, uh, Dave, how's Showcase working out? <laughs> yeah, I got a little book in there. You got it. Which, what stars you got on that show? Yeah, yeah, that was it. Was awesome, dude. I lost my shit on it. His answer was a small order of fries. <laughs> which, which leads us up to uh, on October twelfth of this month, um, ECPW will now be running back out of the ECPW arena, and we're having a big old homecoming show on the twelfth, starting at seven thirty p.m. Tickets are ten bucks. And we'd really like to see a lot of the old guys come out, you know, like Rick Silver, and oh, maybe nice. get some Joel Rules out there, and you know, maybe maybe Just keep a, a Jackie at Pack home. or a, or a Strangler Nick or. My phone you know, Billy well. Laster. Hey, it's it's just you know what, guys, you you, you helped build it. You did. If it I, you know, if you didn't say anything about it, I wouldn't know anything about it. So when you my know, phone that's, rings, that's what we're there for. Uh, we get the word out, because you know we are here, here to spread. spread. The good word, aren't we? Hey, yes, we spread the good you word. You're the, the will and the word of the Lord and Lamb. You spread it good as, as well as you do chlamydia. Oh, who are you, you been talking to? Huh? Huh? Yeah. Right. Okay. Is the secret out again? <laughs> Christ, you. So you, you you mentioned something about wanting to talk a little bit more about uh, cyberspace there because there's. there's I mean, you, you went on a nice little tirade before, so let's. Uh, well, let's it, depends, it depends what part. I mean, look, I'll put it to you this way, you know. As uh, years ago, there was this one website. I put a lot of stuff out there. Everybody I've always talked to, I always hear the same, you know, rhetoric from people. I have yet to, anybody had to actually ask me, you know, true questions like about top, anything there. Really, it's always been the same. Well, what about Billy? How much money this? What happened with that? You know, it's just like let's say what happened with cyberspace. It's like what exactly? Mm -hmm. <laughs> there was so much that went on there. Pre-mark and post-mark, you know, actually two marks, sorry about that, you know, the other one I had no control over, 
that was uh, somebody with an well, ego. There was a, there was a couple of them there, dude. At the towards the end, there were there, 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 there was more than two. Guys, but guys, if, if you want to say names, that's fine. You know, because you have an opinion. That I already mentioned that freaking Mark's name from Queens before. With Derek the, the, Gordon, that was the name, right, Derek? No, Gordon? no, that's John the, Shane. John, John Shane, the one who wrote me out of my spot. Yeah, uh, no, the, you know, there's there's not enough time to get into Derek Gordon right now. <laughs> I will say that. So right. we will definitely be having you back on another show. Oh, there. definitely. There's not enough oh. time to go into that because there's such an intertwining. It's like there's the silver tongues we were talking about that oh. worked their way into the business. We have the no place to in the business. Give you exactly. This, I can give you, that. you know, because in the beginning there were only four real people involved with the show: Billy, his wife Daisy, myself, and my wife. That was it. Those were the only four people. The reason why. You see, Derek Gordon got in there. He was on the first show. He was doing ringside commentary, and I don't know why he was wearing the type of reflective pants, you know, like these black pants that, um, you know, somebody like your gimmick would wear, you know, like a vampire gimmick would wear. Why is somebody sitting ringside wearing these types of pants? I don't get it. Why? Because he's on his own agenda. And it came to light in the, in the main event, he decides to go into business for himself and interfere with the match and... Give the chair to somebody on the outside. And when you're an old school person and you see somebody go into business for themselves, when they're not told to, you get to them show. the fuck out. Yeah. Because there's only one person they're thinking of themselves. And when Billy brought him back in later on, I knew it was a bad move. I knew it was going to be going downhill from there. I had my, That was the good thing between the good mix with Billy and Daisy and myself and Gina. You know... The business minds, and he want to do what fine, we'll keep you on the straight and narrow. You know, you want to keep things professional, you want to keep the bullshit, you want to keep all these people who don't need their nose in here to ruin it, we'll help keep them out for you. And then when these people started to come in, he wanted to hear, because he, he wanted to be like that, that fast. He wanted success to come that fast. I'm like, no, well, we need to the, cultivate if this. If that was the case, dude, you should be running more often. I, and it's hard to do that when I'm the only one busting my ass out here, you know, on the East Coast. Derek, you know, promises the moon and everything, but yet I'm the one who's getting in my car, flyer, you know, going and doing Derek, all this local Derek stuff. Derek came later, though, dude. He came but still, even, at the, even at the same time, though, is my point. That's all. You know, I'm busting my ass. I'm finding these buildings. I am... I was the one doing everything. Billy was just the one paying people. Well, how many... How, you, what, nine guys putting in money at the end? Eight guys putting money at the end? And yeah. they all had to have their say as to who gets booked and who gets pushed and who gets paid? You know, in the beginning, yeah, there was only one or one to two people, you know, funding the whole thing. And that, I, like I said, I was glad I was in the position I was because it's about the product. And Billy told me flat out, you know, he was talking about money, you know, things not being an issue. And I'm the one who made the decision that fine, then there's going to be a base pay for the boys, for the wrestlers on the show. There's going to be, and I... I'll say, I'll put it out there, I don't care, because maybe this is a lesson that needs to be learned, that if you have somebody who is willing to put the capital up and doesn't mind losing a few bucks and they understand it, then you do what's right for the boys. They come first because they're busting their asses out there. There's a difference there. You're, you, talking about, you're talking about a promoter who was Thank one you. of the boys. Exactly. And, and that is the difference. And I know this said a lot, that the, the ones that used to be workers and are, and are running the shows, they, pay, they take care of the because boys. Because you know what they're yeah. going through. And you know what? When you pay the boys well, you're going to get a better product out of it because they would have come to. The you're minimum, the, best out of the local guys, the minimum guys there got $50 each. $50 I each. Because I, I, told, I told Bill, we're going to operate each show then, paid. operate each show like a paid show. Mm -hmm. like if you, if you, and, we did, and, we, and we did the budgeting. It wasn't until other people stuck their nose in there that things started to get out of control. Because when you kept it local, you know, you get some guys 50, some guys 75, some guys 100. You know, um, Devin. Well, you also Devin, gotta pay I, you what know, worth too, you know. Oh, I mean, Crowbar, oh, you know, yeah. brother of mine, great guy. Been in the, he's one of only two people that I've ever wrestled singles, wrestled against as a tag team, and tag team with. He's one of only other t two people. Another fellow Sharps? Oh, yeah. The, the only other person I've ever done that with is sitting to my left. I mean, it just goes to show you, you know, when you're in the business with people for so long, they get to understand you. And why not use the talent that you can trust around you rather than putting somebody in there who really hasn't trained and who just wants a payday and doesn't deserve it. Exactly. I have to say, you know, I think one of the biggest blunders 
towards the end of uh, cyberspace was the Lex Luger <laughs> issue. Oh. Changing the name of the Fed. You can thank me for putting him in the casket. Okay. But, that, but the thing was is that he wasn't even advertised to be on the show. And that's where you guys lost a lot of money on that one. I mean, I understand he, bringing it in I as a whole, whole surprise, show for what but you paid he, he, dude, you could have you, you made some money he on loved, that show. He loved having these surprises because he thought we put enough people on the well, card. Whose idea was the Why surprise? Not? Huh? Whose idea was it for the surprise? His idea. Luger's. No, no, no. Bill's idea. Oh, Billy's. But it was my idea to come up with the gimmick on how to, surpri how to surprise him. And here we are having him come out of casket. Right after Liz. Right, right after Liz right passed. After Liz. And the one thing about Lex Luger is well, you were at that he, show. he suffers from claustrophobia. Oh, Jesus you were at Christ. That show, you know that, right? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm sure he was being a hyperventilating. He, 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 he was glistening. He was glistening like a priest at a Little League game. Mm -hmm. Oh, he was. Yeah, we, we, we saw him. He did not like the. Creepy. Uh, that's also the one about the T-shirt, right? The, the yeah, the whole <laughs> yeah cyberspace T-shirt. <laughs> sure, sure, and I, you know, and he's one of those guys that, you know, he came up at a time, and if you look at him now, I saw a recent picture of, of Luger, oh, and looks, it's yeah, I saw him with uh, uh what's his name, um, <sighs> Razor Ramon. I, I, I it's like you, you words can't express, you know, but some of these guys, they do that to themselves. They deal with such not just personal demons, but the ways they go about dealing with it, they should have just, hopefully they could have waken up a little earlier, and if so, we could have had a lot less deaths. You had a, just a, a lot of misbookings those last few shows you ran, even after the Candido show. Uh, Candido. I wasn't involved. Oh yeah, you, oh were, you, were, you were basically thrown I was, by them. The only reason, and I, would, I resorted to ring announcing because it was the only way I could stay there. You know, they any, any job I tried to do there, it was like they tried somebody to put into my spot. I was the Liberty DeVito. Yeah, you still like a book. When, when, when did you lose your heat? Um, I was at the car, that first Carney show with the Molotov cocktail. That was like the first or second show I really wasn't at. And Bill would not even return my, turn my calls. Do you, do you guys know who Liberty DeVito was? Liberty DeVito played with uh, Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band. Okay. All right. And he was kind of on the outs. But Bruce didn't say anything. Nobody said anything. And then he, get, he, you know, he's getting to a few shows and he's seeing a replacement, but nobody's telling him anything. It's like, wow, you, you guys are going out there. I'm not. Was, nobody told me anything. That's kind of what he didn't want to confront it. Bill had pissed off a lot of people. Armand, since Armand wrestled as a Kid USA. Oh, my great guy. A couple of good stories about our. Oh, that's which, one story we've got to get into by later. Way, real quick, if you want to see Armand Sincere, a.k.a. <laughs> Kid USA, you can go to New York Ren Fair any season, and he's in there, he's doing a. Uh, he's the, Brutus. He's Brutus. You know, and Bill would just. Good gig there, brother. He just pissed off his friends. It's a payday. Mm. He, and that's why he, he's like, oh, this happened or that happened. He would never talk to them again, and that's kind of what happened with me. And then. Okay, you want to see the unraveling? You want to see the unraveling of cyberspace? Why? Because this is what happens when you let the inmates take over the asylum. Yep. Well, let's book Vince Russo for a Q&A and pay him out the ass for no reason. No, let's pay uh, Maven $2,000 and I'll buy you your gear for the night. Yeah, who you couldn't even fucking change. What? Yeah, Maven. You remember Maven? Yeah, we are. Yeah, yeah he's, 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 he's the show I was there for. He was in the he was in the area for one um for one of the um, autograph shows. It was one of the uh, what was it the thing that the, the WWE did the uh, tough, enough. Tough, enough. tough enough tough enough first winner of tough enough right. Well, actually, um, meanwhile, actually, the Miz is still and a little there. while after that though he was on HSN, mm -hmm. and he was actually good. He actually you know was a good talent. I'll I'll say it for this much. He has personality. Mm -hmm. He has an excellent. Presence in front of the camera. Yeah, smart, they get the hell out of business. Exactly, exactly. Well, I don't know. You got these two. He marked the two grand out of us before. Uh, not, uh, not, 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 not out of me. Not out of me. You ain't. You wasn't the money guy. Never, never. Nope. I'm just the brains behind the operation. To the last few bills, put your brain to sleep. God, I, I could just imagine that. Thing. I don't, did he even? I don't even think he changed for that match. No. He had, he had a jogging suit. Yeah. What was it? Yeah, druggy shooting uh, suit in like white high tops. Wasn't his only move the drop kick? Elbow or something? I don't know. His high spot was getting in the ring. <laughs> oh shit! So I want I want to switch this up a little bit. Um, what was the worst place you guys have ever worked, like venue wise? 
God. I did a show in Cleveland, Ohio in a bar parking lot. Is that the one that we went all the way up there with Jimmy bar. with, or is that something else? That's something, that's a different, <laughs> it's a same promoter, but a different show. We, we were, Pizza Joe? No, no. What was the guy? No, no, that Pizza that Joe, that was for? Joe Kent. No, that was, um, oh. The, uh, Pizza Joe's what, Connecticut, right? He did the hardcore, Cleveland. yeah. No, Pizza Joe was uh, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, Ohio. Right, right, right. But no, it was some sort of hardcore Cleveland thing, and we got dressed in the parking lot. You would pull up the vans, a curtain, Couple well, chairs. That, that's, that's different than, than where where's you Where's the bathroom? Well, you got to go in the bar. There's two different things. There's two questions here. The first one was, where's the worst place you've ever worked? And then the next, place, the next question would be, where's the worst place you've ever gotten ready for a show? Okay. Like your dressing room. So the first place, yeah, let's yeah. stick with the first question because this is going to go around here. You ever gotten dressed in a ring truck? <laughs> that's like a palace compared to some places. Pretty <laughs> much it is. Do yeah. you remember? Do you, speaking thing. of palaces, do you remember Passaic Palace? Oh God! Do you remember it? the kitchen with the roaches? Yes. That has to oh. be the worst place yes. I've ever dressed in ever. When ever. Gino only had the front of the school. Oh, we had, God, to, get, we had yes. to get dressed behind the uh, rain, uh, the shower curtain. Right. Where the uh, glass cases. Oh my God! Put right. a rope there to the wall. Before we had that back room, we had a four foot by fifteen foot space to get dressed with about 30 guys. There was a gym originally in that. Right, right, room. right. Yeah. I know the, the previous um, one. That, that was fun. Sardines I'm in pretty, a can. I'm pretty sure that Did must have smelled wonderful. Oh, no, uh, I've had my share. A bit of roses. Oh, I'm sure. Blackwells and bear. Mm. Must have smelled, oh, must, Lord, must have smelled like cotton candy. I'm that's sure. when it was majority of Sharps guys up there as I well. Had, yes, I had Hawaiian Hurricane, another big brother. Yeah, he's, you know. So, Tim, what about you? What was, like, the one of the worst places you worked in what the worst place you've changed? Um, can't think right now. Uh, I wrestled like four matches today. Oh, yeah, he did. He had a rough day. He did Boy, a show. did a marathon. <laughs> Good Lord. What about you? Uh, there's, there's been definitely a couple of places, but... Uh, I think the Cortland show kind of puts up there for where we had to change. Uh, it, it puts up there because we were stuck in a bathroom, but... A uh, public men's bathroom. That's where we got to change. I, 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 I think it was the kitchen... Classy, guys. Classy. I, think it, I think it was like the 5x5 the five five kitchen that they had in this one little place Passaic in Palace. Jersey City. It might, might have been the it same It wasn't place, the same house. I don't, I don't remember the cockroaches, too? but I, I do remember the guy screaming that we fucked up his floors. Oh! The, the public bathroom is a normal thing, especially when you see the beach shows. Oh yeah. When you put in the rain out. Yeah, but you know, yeah, really this was the same bathroom that the when, men had to walk into to use. Yeah, nothing, they were changing, nothing, they were peeing. Nothing yeah. like sitting there being the only female in the locker room. Don't go in the locker room. Uh, where else was I gonna go? Sit in the car. So I'm sitting <laughs> fuck that shit. <laughs> you can't hang with the boys, what the fuck are you doing in the locker room? But it's uncomfortable when you're sitting there and they're pissing two feet away from you and you're like, ah, da, 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 da. when you've got people coming out from the street and using the bathroom I as remember, you're trying to talk. Oh, the best one was when I the boys 15, were talking the matches 15, while one's taking a piss. 15, 20 years ago, you wouldn't even been allowed in the locker room. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. 15, 20 years ago, you wouldn't even be allowed in the locker room. Girls out. Yeah. Oh, if you're not a part of the show, you don't get yeah. in. You're Come in. Well, I'm part room. of the show, Come in, talk your spots, yeah. and you yeah. leave. Yeah. Exactly. I remember there always had to be a girls' locker room. All right. All right, guys, we're going to take another quick moment. We'll be right back. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, we're back again. Hey. Right. Hey. Take another break this time. <laughs> we got to keep taking breaks. Hey, you know, it's just going to go a little longer than our usual 30 minutes. We figured we'd give you a little something special. So, yeah, we were... We were <laughs> Misbooked. Yeah. Misbooked. <laughs> we, we, we were going over. Oh, wait, where's my guy? My guy. <laughs> um... So yeah, we were just discussing some of the worst places we've wrestled or changed in for wrestling shows. Uh, I got changed in a horse stall. Yes, <laughs> that was the Medieval Times. Up I in, can't bitch in, about uh, the show though. I mean, was that Toronto? Toronto Medieval Times. That still has eighteen hundred people. Who'd you work? Not bad. Work Snuka, one of our best matches. That was uh, courtesy of uh, Rocky Johnson. R Ricky Johnson. Ricky Johnson had nine cameras. I've never seen it. <laughs> nine cameras, well, well, nine cameras. You record it professionally and never see it. Feelers out for you there, Stragler. They, caught it, from, they like, caught it from every angle I, except I, one that you I had see. the date. I've given it to everybody. Nobody's even heard of the show, and it was such a great <laughs> show. I'll see what my buddy there with the the, the indie wrestling uh, on uh, YouTube can find. Yeah, for Scorpio me. on the show, fresh out of Japan, yeah, ECW in Japan. Rhino was a rookie. Sabu was on the show. Yeah, Rhino Richards. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what he was. Yeah, he was he was Sabu's bitch driving him around. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. 
mainly work the you know, you know the what, what we were just talking was? about guys who introduce guys around the business here here's my buddy Ryan. that was our last road trip with snooker wasn't it no no we had another well, year after well, that we our last road trip was, that was no i mean that was like the last kind of like family oh we made a vacation yeah because we family road falls. trip we went up to niagara falls and had to spend some good time with the brother before is that where you took that big tony yeah we took big tony with us but yeah that was right before the bullshit started that was our last good Another story. I know. For another trust podcast. Me, trust me, me and Spangler have that. We don't have enough recording show. for it. Yeah, no. Sorry, everybody forgets. I mean, I'm not going to get into it. I think I stuck to it. All right. All right, we're moving on now. Question about you. Yeah. Um, Is there any building where the ceiling's too low? <laughs> oh, pretty much ECPW, uh, you know, building. I know for Chronic, when we did with the Knights of Columbus, so I remember Dark that Snooker yeah. looked at that show and he's like, oh, he was so mad. Can you get the second one? No, yeah. you, you can't get off the second no. rope in somebody's buildings. I think that one you couldn't even get Paramus, off the top rope. Paramus, we can't get off the top rope, can we? No, you know, I just, I just, I, I, I just moved, you know, moved into a new residence. And the ceiling of my home, you know, the nice vaulted ceiling, you know, there's more room in there than half the buildings ECPW has run in. Well, you got a regular size ring and you're not running high Look, brother, we years. still need to get booked. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is me. You oh, know? Yeah. Hey, look, I'm just, I'm, Relax. I'm sarcastic, I'm a wise ass. I don't mean anything. I just the opinions of funny. guests on this show do not necessarily reflect those of the Fallen Angels. You got That's it. my American voice in case you needed to hear that. Okay, oh, you do it instead of the overweight Larry for us. Can no, I, 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 fuck that fat fuck. Oh, okay. I thought that was pretty cool. You do that pretty well. Fat. Yeah, no. <laughs> Alright. What do um, we got there? Ooh. I don't know. What else do we want to... Oh! I want to bring up a little gem that you and, and, and Dave used to do a long, long time called, called Wrestling Tracks. Can we, can we talk a little bit about wrestling tracks there that yeah. actually started, I you know, believe it was uh, you, Rick Rocker. As low budget, let me tell you, as low budget as it was, let me tell you, because nobody does it anymore. What a way to learn how to do promos and learn how to talk in a mic. And actually Maybe see there production. needs to be a resurgence There's of it. something about it. I mean, there's something to be said about public access television. It, like, here's a perfect example. When Gino used to run his shows, two guys we did interview would get interview time for the entire show. Meanwhile, you have 20 guys begging for mic time, and you can't get themselves over because you have two announcers who can't get names right, let alone get the moves right, let alone get them <laughs> over. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying names, but it's true, though. You're not only watching the product, and you can't even get the damn names right. You can't even get the damn moves right. That's part of getting over. I'm crazy. Joe G. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you can choose. Anyway. Uh, hey, but right. it's, it's, it's one of those things that you have to get over with. You have to learn the money. You give a guy a mic, mic, microphone for the first time, of course it's going to be great. Did you ever see Jim Cornette's first time you ever did an interview? Oh, jeez. It's so dull. You can see it's a 19-year-old kid who's nervous as all hell. Yeah, but there's also a yeah. difference between somebody who's been in the business um, since before we all started, who does ring announcing, who can't get the name cancer, which is like the disease, or crim, right? No, it's... It's Angel 1, Angel 2. Oh, or, oh so, look, they're, so they're so identical. So. Hey, come here. Come here, Christian. Come in. So, here, we're, we're, we're going come off here. subject. We're going off subject. All right. Well, we're well, wrestling tracks. Now, wrestling tracks you know. was, you know, Radical Rick Rocker and KJ Top Down had a, a talk show. In. And in the beginning, it was also Professor X. I see you were there. About Who is Professor X? Charles that? Xavier. Prefer, no, Professor X was AKA uh, Johnny Nat, AKA uh, oh, right, George. Johnny Nat. Who you know now is probably one of the top photographers in the business right exactly. now. Exactly, and he was, see originally, what at, how it all started was, it was a little radio show called Who's Slamming Who? Right. On 88.7 WPSC, William Patterson College Radio. Like it was, um, it was Rick Rocker, mm -hmm. it was, at the time, Tom Casola, because <laughs> when they needed, because when they needed a guest, he would come on as Kodiak Bear. Right. Bear. Awesome man. Love Bear. So and then awesome so man. Tony wanted to do more and he got into the T V with KJ Tubtown and they started the wrestling track. So it kinda of developed from there. Johnny Nat came over a little bit in the early episodes, but then it branched out and they started to bring in more of the indie talent rather than just talking about news. And then that's where Strangler. Well, start comes in. Sharp Sharp Sky started coming up from the school because it was the only place we can get, you know. Practice interview skills, mm -hmm. but I, I, they they had a, their own storyline going on. I mean, I've never seen a Fed where two guys who never stepped in the frickin' ring before, but they had their own tag team titles. 
So we're going to talk about tag team titles that we never actually won, we never actually wrestled for, never took a bump for. But we're the tag champions. No, this is umpteenth part. This was nothing else like you've experienced. It was a total. I've never experienced something like it. Should she better? But we also we 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 got to do that at it though. We did the charity things. Yes. We did Special Olympics for the and did a from the TV show. So we did a couple good things out of the show too. You know, there were some funny, a lot of funny moments on the show too. You know, not not just what would happen. Every show had a chair shot. Oh yeah. And, you know, eventually there was a brawl outside the studio. <laughs> you know, there was a, everybody was going, you know, brawling back and forth because we had so many guys, and there was only one camera, and they couldn't even get it outside. So you had this like shot, whatever they can get through the doorway. <laughs> so guys were going off like, no, no, gotta get closer, get through, get back, get, get back on camera. And there was one great moment where a couple of the guys showed up at a time when the show just wasn't ready yet, and they're coming down the elevator, and. Ele ding, elevator opens, and it's a couple of guys, a part of like a, a singing quartet, practicing. Oh. And they're ah. just going, sitting there like, da 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 <laughs> Elevator doors open, <laughs> elevator doors close, nobody gets off, it goes right back up again. <laughs> it was like, well, I guess it's not time yet. See, made him laugh pretty hard. Do you guys know of anybody who might have any copies of this oh, out there? I used Do you to think have a copy. Uh, Maybe. No? They uh, erased all the tapes. The uh, studio, yeah. the TV studio, racing. Yeah. Uh, Same so uh, studio only, that there's, the, there's this one elusive tape out there, though, right? I had one. It had the whole beer commercial on it. Yeah. Do we know where it went? Who borrowed it? Somebody borrowed it. I think. Better. Don't look at me. Maybe. Better. Oh wait, wait. The beer commercial. I mean, you with your uh, 32 ounce. No, horse. no. Beer. Tons of beer. Oh, that. Yes, that's right. Tub Town with the commercial. Yes. But there was an interesting. See, my good man here. When he used to wrestle, under the mask. As, as, as the strangle, yes. Tank. I wasn't yes. wrestling, I was just talking. He was talking. He'd come out with his mask, pair of sunglasses over it, <laughs> and he'd have a big gulp cup. But what would be in that big gulp? About three fours light. Exactly. And when you're doing a two or three tapings, you know, from 12 to two, three, four, and you're having that many cups of it, you know, sometimes these tapings can get to be pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah, we don't have to be a show until 7 o'clock. With the podcast here, yeah. Right. Hey. Um, so, you you mentioned something about uh, uh, Subliminal Charlie there, Strangler. Could you, could you go, it was something that you and uh, your, your ex-partner, uh, Hank, uh, used Ripper? to do. Ripper? Ripper? Uh, yeah, we used to have the, uh, me and uh, oh, Ripper, we used to Strangler, we were the mask gimmick. We used to have uh, worship Charles Manson. Yeah, big 8x10 Charles Manson and a big glass frame and just leave it out subliminally, you know, even when we weren't on the show, we like put it behind a tree, <laughs> put it underneath the chair, and Charlie would always be, oh, he always sees the eyes in the background while Rocker and Dove Down just blah, 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 putting themselves over. But, um, no, it's a little Charlie, we, we, we got a lot of heat off that. Cool. Not as much heat as wearing the swastikas on our foreheads. Oh, yeah, yeah that's... You know, and, and I, we've talked about, you know, you saying that we are doing the the, uh, the angle or the, the type of material that we do. A lot of people are... You feel that we may not be able to get over as much as we should because we're doing a very religious it'll thing. Hinder, it'll hinder your bookings. I, I, I kind of disagree with that. Uh, Vin, Vince has tried happen. it twice and it fails well, in his face Yeah, you twice. know what, we're not looking to be at Vince. Well, that's we're mainstream. Looking... I'm just saying the gimmick, that's gimmick and mainstream. Then, you're not talking look... about the Sisters of Mercy, I know. Yeah, but you're talking that's about, one. but okay. you're also talking Bottom about a guy person. that comes from, that's true. Yeah. You, you were doing the Helter Skelter thing, you were walking out with a picture of Charlie, isn't that a little bit more... Um... Well, we, were, we, we weren't and offending then, God. And then we, we go were... and we look at the Lord. I disagree, you were offending God. Excuse me, don't forget there was Reverend Devon. Fire Ferguson, but they all everybody flipped out about that too. That's just Mike Shaw. Give me 561. Well, what about when when, he, when the, the sons of Gestapo when he said with the old ECPW thing? And that probably hurt their yeah, booking. And of me, and, me and Billy had to change our gimmick a couple times. That's why we did Helter Skelter and the Outlaws. You know, there was one show in Pennsylvania. But so far, we haven't had any problems. That you had the, yeah, I remember. Oh, no, they. I we remember. Were ready, we were ready to walk out, and uh, we were working for uh, Bay Ragney. Little Charlie. Oh, that thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, Little Charlie. Little Charlie. Liberty All-Star Wrestling, right outside of Philly when ECW. They were like the, the secondary ECW. 
Betty walks in about 20 minutes before me and Billy are going on, and guys can't work. You know, I think the people are flipping out about the man's going to get a change. Yeah. Well, it kind of sounds like when me and uh, Lord Colt were doing a show for a Catholic school, it was McCorston in High School. Yeah. Uh, they they actually said that we couldn't come on the show because they believed we were true Satanists. And it's like, they're seriously. So well, if they believe we, it, so, you're over. Yeah. So Lord Colt, <laughs> Lord Colt actually went and threatened media coverage of them not being able to let us on the show. And in retaliation, the building decided they would not sell tickets. I believe you actually worked against uh, Valentine that night. That was down Trent. Yeah, it's McCorston High School. That oh, was the okay. name. Of, that was the name of the high school. That's right. That's the show. Cousin Luke. It was. It was, a, it was the day. It was the day. The whoo. Your camera sucks, dude. It's not. That can't, did it go to? Yeah, Twelve stopped. minutes. It said automatically stop, and they pressed the button. Okay. okay. Um, oh, also, it's. Oh, she started again. Okay. It's, it's good. Okay. So this way, hey, I think it just right. made. Yeah, it's if you okay. see it stop, just click it real fast again. This way, it'll. Okay. Yep. But and, and this is this is also the reason why we, we keep stopping is because we also do a video cast along with the podcast and this is really doesn't affect the podcast at all but for those who like to see what we look like with our beautiful ugly mugs here you know that's for the video cast so anyway that goes to it when a, when a guy doesn't know anything about the business and he tries to book a show right what's he have he has the flesh years over tag team what's he do he splits them up in singles matches why the hell would you put one monster against Valentine? And well, I don't even know what the hell he did with, with uh, uh, yeah, Ray Ray. Yeah, Doesn't that uh, sound familiar there, dear brother? And, and, and Cousin yeah. Luke looked at him like, nope, this ain't happening, and switched the whole show. I thought, that's right, I think I was working. Uh, you guys see, you did. You, you went in the back, you saw what the card was, you are like, no, we're going to switch this up, and yeah. you changed it. But I think it was because we didn't have enough matches, that's why the, the flesh eaters were broken up that night. No, it did. It had plenty of matches. Did I I was, it was booked. If you, look at the, if you look at the poster, it says Greg Valentine against Mobutu. Yeah, but you worked Greg. Yeah. Because Greg it. didn't want to work. Well, it didn't make Better sense to have them work uh, like that. On. You only yeah. split a tag team if you're doing a program. I don't even remember if we did a tag match that night. I don't remember. I remember walking out with Mikey, and I, I think you went out with Luxurious Lynn that night. Oh. No? You Lynn sure? was not booked on that show. Okay. Me. Yeah. And here it sounds almost very, very familiar. Right. It's happened once or twice, I think. Yeah, happened. I mean, me and Billy used to take bookings and, uh, and we'd split up the singles, but that's when working for promoters for a long time, like when we working for LAW. We worked yeah. a lot of shows for LAW. Yeah. yeah. Once in a while, we split us up. Did it for Gino, did it for Sharp. Anywhere we worked regularly. Hmm. What else notes you got there? Uh. Because, uh, you know, we can do a couple different shoots if you want, but you're running low on time. And no, we're fine. We're, we're flying on time. We're, we're going to come back and do a whole cyberspace show one no, day. No, you oh, guys, if you guys have more stuff you want to go on about cyberspace, go uh, ahead. You don't have the time. You know, night turns into day at some point. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You want to just wrap it up then? Yeah, I guess we'll wrap it up. Um, oh, really? Actually, um, we, wait, I yeah, think, they got we, about I think we might material. be getting a, okay. we might have some questions from fans, maybe. Let's open up the phone, see what we can get. Right. You have phones? Yeah, you don't have phones. theme music, you don't have... I played your theme music in the beginning of this thing. What are you talking about? Yeah, see, the man just doesn't no understand graphics. Productions. It's all called editing it afterwards. Oh, look, we got a phone call. We got a phone call. I need his ass. Hold on for a second. Oh. Yeah. oh, it's from one of our faithful. <laughs> hey, angels. Hey. So, uh, who, who should we have the pleasure of talking to? I think it's Mrs. Plasma there. Hey there, Tim. I think it's your wife there. She'd be asking us some questions. She wants you to bring home bread and milk. <laughs> <laughs> she wants you to bring home bread and milk. Where'd she get your number? <laughs> she gets, oh. oh Lordy. Why, do you, why do you have Mrs. Plasma? Are you a big pimpin' again like, oh. I, like I told you you should be? <laughs> hey, you got to convert them somehow. Hey, she is our number one faithful. So, hey. number one. Number one. Number one. Ask the question! <laughs> Just wondering, what ignited your passion for the business? What ignited our passion for the business? A lighter. <laughs> and propane. Ooh. Hi, hey, pitch to me, hey, huh? Pitch to me, pitch. not to chalk you there. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. Well, answer her oh. question. While they're playing cuddle. While they're playing cuddle. I need an MRI! Oh! You're the host! 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 I'm terrible at it. 
Oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh. What got you in business, Wacken? Oh, well, well, let me see. What got oh. invited in my passion? He's answering a question, shut! You know, I'll, I'll answer the break. I my passion for the business. Well, when you start wrestling amateur-wise when you're in the third grade... Oh, we're getting want, a book going. All right, go on. And you want to continue with something and you actually enjoy wrestling. You enjoy the sport aspect of it and you want to keep that going. That's what kind of ignited and kept my fire going. That was a lame answer, dude. Was the hey, it was an honest answer. Because no, I'm, no, because no, I'm, no, a, res no, I'm a wrestling right. purist. No. I enjoy the I'm sport sorry, aspect of it less than the more than the entertainment value. And that's what kept my you know, my fire going, to be able to provide that wrestling, to go out there and know how to do certain submission moves other guys still don't know how to learn because they're not being taught them. <laughs> Mr. Gene LaBelle here. Hey, dude, I was two years in the business. I knew all my shit before I started watching Gene LaBelle. I didn't go from Gene LaBelle to learn how to wrestle. But you see, it's nice to know that people like us still know who Judo Gene LaBelle is. Well, we got uh, what is it, the one moron on WWE you're telling everybody about Judo Gene now, Daniel Bryan. Brian Danielson. <laughs> Reaver, you don't want that. So I think we got one answer. You guys. All right. So what? What ignited it? When I guess sitting there watching wrestling with Da, it was like the one hey. bonding thing that we really had with him. Well, it was the only time he was nice. Right. So he got to watch Last other people get beat up. Was... Sorry. You know, you know, right. I got to fill in. Okay, I'll fill this in. So yeah, no. Do you? Oh, you guys are rating superstars. Oh, you have no kidding. It's an editing nightmare. So, <laughs> uh, what ignited our passion for the business? Uh, we were sitting there uh, watching, uh, getting along with Da for the first time it ever. It was just, we were getting sitting around and we watched all the classics. And we just kind of, all three of us just kind of looked at each other and just knew that this is what we needed to do. It was like an art form in motion. You have to, it was just, it just grabs you from within. Plus, it's a good way to spread the word, too. Where is that, dude? Yeah. Like cancer. Yes. It, uh, spread it like cancer. Like cancer, yeah. Cancer, you know. Um, I don't know, you're just looking at it there. Oh, you're just no, fantastic. Like, yeah, you know, uh, what sparked my passion for it, it's, I was already in the business. I was already wrestling at that point in time when, you know, when this, this, this group of people, they just kind of they grabbed me to the side and they said, you're doing pretty good, but you're an idiot. Yeah. I tell you I that every day. I think one of those guys is actually to, down there strangling you, you, you need to stop. Yeah, take it easy. You need to, you need forget, to stop. Everything you, forget everything you think you know and start from scratch, point take zero. Exactly. No backyarders allowed. I was, I, I was pulled out to the backyard, which was probably the smartest thing I ever did. And uh, this group of people, they just took me under their wing. And, and that's when the passion really grew and fire started to ball up. Because now I'm really starting to learn something about this business. That's that's what it's so we're, we're back for me. as a family again, and it was, it, was, it was good times. It was really good times. Hey, hey, you, you you got to play with Da. I got to play with the real boys. Hey, oh, uh, that sounds really wrong, there, brother. It doesn't have to mean two things all the time. Damn. What was your, Do you? Do you have anything else? Any other questions? What made you come back into the business after your accident? What brought us back? What brought us back? Oh, Lord have mercy. Uh, we saw a lot of shit on the Indies. That's, that's, it, be blunt. A lot of I, shit. I think, oh. call, I think calling it a lot of shit is being nice. It was, it was more like a degeneration of just crap. We wanted to bring a lot of the old school back. We wanted to slow it down a little bit. We also wanted to have a good actually, time. Leave out our own terms this These time. guys right here, they touched on it before. You, you look at what the product is now, you see some of the wrestlers that are out there now, and you, and you wonder to yourself, who the hell is teaching them? You got, you got, oh, I'm about to go off on that. Go solo. ahead, do it, go ahead. Do it, I'm not, I, I don't even want to mention names, but let me, let me tell you something. Don't mention names, but just, just. I was at the show, and I'm sitting there before the show starts, and I watched this moron take money from peep, from kids. I don't know, they could have been... 14 to 16 18, years old, so anywhere, like that. That anywhere around that age, but, but, but he took $20 a piece from them. And he said, come on, get into the ring before the show starts, and I'll do a little seminar with you, and we'll see if you know how to wrestle. Oh, and, 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 and I just, I, I couldn't understand what the man was doing. He, he, he started with the very simple basics of wrestling, but 
Could even do he, that, he didn't even divulge into to the reasons as to why you do certain things in the ring. He didn't even try to show him the right ways. He just, okay, go ahead, here, do it this way. All right, now you can run off the ropes. He didn't even show them that right. He's showing the, the Mexican way of... Uh it was, like, it was like giving to twenty-five dollars to jump around in a, like a bounce castle. It's you know, it, it, it reminds me of some, of some of these other guys out there that say, <coughs> "Oh, come down to this place here in such and such a town and uh, twenty-five dollars for, for for a seminar session, and then at the end of the session, tell them, oh, the school hasn't opened yet.' Oh, we'll let you know that. Nice. Well, thank you for giving us your money. Anyway. Yeah, we'll, we'll let you know when the school opens. See, there's another story there for another time. A certain kind of another shiesty promoter by the name of Tom Runsby. <laughs> My uh, trustful I mean, partner. I mean, this yeah. business is full of them, but that's, it that's, seems in the last ten years it's just gotten time. worse and worse and worse. The Rosby was, was an old back. school con, yeah. you know, kind of like Al Mano Maniac's new school con. Same, same. He just had a silver tongue, but he knew how to get every dime out of you. Yeah. If you're gonna teach somebody, teach them the right way. And if you don't know how to freaking wrestle, get the fuck out of the ring. Right. Yeah. But you see, that's the problem. Some of these people can't get out of the ring because they're paying to be in that ring. Yeah. Very much so. You still on? You still get your caller on hold? I do. She's still wow, on. wasting minutes. Lovely. She's not on hold. She's been listening the whole time. Twenty first century, dude. Nobody pays for minutes anymore. Right. Right. Uh, battery's about to die, though. Okay. <laughs> nice well, thank you for calling our number one faithful. It was great talking to you. I hope we answered your questions. You did. Have a nice night. All right. Thank you, honey. Could have used a can and a string. <laughs> <laughs> We're low budget. We're low budget. Old Morse code? Alright. Is there, is there anything? Don't pull the magic. Don't pull the magic. Is there anything else? Oh, magic. Is there anything else? Maybe anybody wants to uh, talk about? Or, uh, Announce my book. <laughs> what, we're going to write a book? Yeah. We're finally, we're finally going to write a book there, brother? Yeah, it'll be out 2032, the year after Social Security dries up and I, I need the money. Alright, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. If we go on turtle time, yeah, that's basically. I don't think there's it. enough time It'll to go cross the finish time. line at least. Mine will get done. <laughs> oh, boy. We've been talking yeah, about writing this book for years. Yes, <sighs> the boys don't. It, the, let the boys have their stories. I didn't say we had to do that. I would just wanted to say our piece. Uh, nobody cares. You got to you know, say say your piece, boy. Their piece. Peace. No, that's like you said, that's for a whole another show, brother. Yeah, that's I mean, you we, and I that's you and I sitting down and telling our story. We're all for two hours. Looks now. like we're gonna be doing an interview in that day. Yeah, right, yeah. But we need to talk about our story. That needs to be said. Alright, well I guess we're gonna wind it down. Um what's me and Timothy Plasma there. Thanks for coming on. Um just want to promote a couple of shows we got coming up, especially the ECPW Arena Homecoming show. It's uh, actually my first time coming back since 2001. How was the last time you did a show there? Uh, Maybe some asshole time. won't throw a fucking cigar at you and your child. Oh, yeah, yeah, right? Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. And then bitch about it. You know, professional little dick. Well, that's because I came after him with a chair in the back, and that kind of crossed well, the Well, and then again, you, you and then got I got promoted. yelled at by the promoter, but we were Promoter doesn't somewhere. stick up for the boys. I think it was in the middle of 2004 was the last time I was there. 2004 for you. How about you? 2001. 2001 TV tapings. But we're very happy to be going back to where it all began, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I mean, we could do so much more there than we could do at the, you know, all the buildings, and it'll give us a lot more time. And I hope we can really give you some really good shows out of the building like we used to. And hopefully we get to see a lot of old, you know, faces, a lot of the guys that helped start building the TV tapings there at ECPW Arena from 96 to about 2008. Well, before that too. But yeah. Well, yeah, well, I'm sorry, uh, what, uh, 95, 94? I started doing shows there at the end of 90. What are you, sweating Crisco? So, Gross. So Aww. anyway, anyway, um, so we're going to bring this down to, we're going to bring this to an end now. Because I, I think you've, you've probably been... You've suffered enough. To, yeah. <laughs> you guys have suffered enough. Uh, we're going to bring up some of our uh, shows coming up. Uh, definitely pushing the ECPW Arena Homecoming, which is October 12th at 7.30 p.m. in Lake Hiawatha. If you want to find out more information about that show, go to ecpw1.com. Uh, on October 13th, we have the GCW show in Pompton Lakes at the Pompton Lakes Elks Lodge. And that's uh, at 3.30. Tickets are $15. 
And I believe we are working Frankie Flo and his son Junior. Frankie Jr. and Frankie enemies of the Flo state. And that's the flows. That's what apparently we're... that's supposed to be for the tag team titles. Are you? See how that goes? I'm wrestling a zombie. You're, wor you're wrestling working. You're working. Vampire uh, versus a zombie. Oh. There you go. That, I can't get any more cliche than that. Happy Halloween. Happy. <laughs> <laughs> you should get Lord um, Paul to be your manager. Hey. <laughs> On, uh, on October 25th, here in Booton, New Jersey, we will be working at the Booton Elks Club. Uh, we will be working, I believe, again, Frankie Flo and his son, Frankie Jr. You should have a, pro you should have a program Flo down to a T by now. Yeah. Hey. Also, <laughs> same gimmick? Same gimmick. <laughs> shows at 7.30, and that's at the Booton Elks Club on uh, October 25th, and the tickets are $12 at the door. Um, we also have a show coming up on November 8th, uh, run by UPN and ECPW at Monopack High School in New York. Mayo Mayo Pack. Mayo Pack. Mayo Pack. Mayo Pack. Mayo Pack. But you know, we're Irish. Just what do you want from me? Yeah, you know. See, I'm not even looking at it. I know how to pronounce I'm it. I've been drinking a little bit. Yep. And uh, a big one for us coming up on November 16th. We will be making our New Moon Wrestling. New Moon Rising. New Moon Rising. Sorry, apologies. New Moon Rising. Uh, wrestling debut, and that's again at uh, on November 16th in Deptford, New Jersey. I believe that's a five o'clock show. Still waiting on some details on that one. Uh, we'd like to have special thanks to Shiny Wizards for once again allowing us this opportunity to talk to the masses and spread the word. Good word. Um, thank you, Strangler Nick, for showing up and coming to the show. Huzzah. And uh, Dave Levy, thank you. Thank you. And uh, Timothy Plasma, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, thank you for our call-in from Tasha O'Dell, our number one faithful, and Mae for supporting us as much as you do. Huzzah. And uh, thank you to Matt, Eddie, Tony, and Kevin yeah. and the Shining Wizards once again. You guys, thank you so much for supporting us as much as you do. And also, uh, if, you're, if you're interested in uh, being one of our sponsors, we're looking for sponsors. That means that we would advertise you on our show. And when we get our t-shirts done, you'll have a little bit of a little thing on the back of our t-shirts, too. Okay. Uh, if you want to get in touch with us, you can get in touch with us at Fallen Angels Tag Team at AOL.com. Or you can find us on Facebook at, at uh, Fallen Angels Tag Team Facebook. Huh. So, Lord, of course, you didn't even know AOL still existed. Right. Yeah, well, you know, you got to get out there somewhere. You know, not everybody wants off, works off of Facebook. You've got there, mail. But, uh, Good Lord. You've got mail. Yeah. Oh. No, no such thing as a good, reputable uh, guy to get your name out there anymore, like the Bill Lafters or the uh, Peter yeah. Brocks or... Yeah. There's no more good, uh, reputable people out there. So do it self-promotion now. You do That's it. It's self-promotion because the only people have. out there are people who've never been in the business or even in the locker room, but they're going to go out there and critique everybody. Yeah, I know. We're running into a little bit of that problem there. But. Okay. Thank you all for joining us, and uh, uh -huh. stay tuned for uh, Episode 4. Bye. Bye.